Okay, Job chapter 21. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech. Listen to me, will you? And let this be your consolation, your comfort. Suffer me that I shall that I may speak. And after that I have spoken, what's the attitude Job has to these guys? Mock on. Almost every single chapter that he has spoken, your 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 physicians of value, you, your age, but you don't know nothing. Now just keep on mocking. Now, as for me, Job is my Job's complaint to man. Is my am I complaining to you? Chapter three, when Job started speaking, it was not to these. It's just a man in agony just getting it off his chest. And I don't think Job would have had chapter three out loud if he knew what would happen. I mean, have you not ever just had a problem and just outwardly to start saying what the problem is. Let's get it off your chest. And ever since he's done that to these three men, it's been mockery. And the complaint is not to man, it's to God. And if it were so, if I were talking to you, why should not my spirit be troubled? They're making Job weary. They're making Job troubled. They're making Job worse than he is. Mark me and be astonished. And lay your hand upon your mouth. Shh. Hush. Be quiet. <laughs> Even when I remember, I am afraid. And tremble taketh hold of my flesh. Yeah, he still has that fear that Everything that I feared has come upon me. Now, we've been talking about the wicked men. We saw it in chapter 20. We're going to see Job now explain to us the wicked man. How he's not this wicked man in chapter 20 and so far. But remember Job pictures as a book the children of Israel in the tribulation period. There are 42 months. There are 42 chapters. Chapter 21, we are in the middle of what would be the, the tribulation, the going to the great tribulation period, and how much we talk about the wicked. And not only the wicked, it's not Job, but as far as the tribulation passage and the tribulation uh, uh, that we can apply the application to, we're looking at the Antichrist. In the book of Job, the first book to be written in the Bible. And there's prophecy of what's going to go on in the tribulation period in the book of Job. So let's see about the wicked man. Wherefore do the wicked live and become old? Now, chapter 20. And he's answering so far. And I don't know how old the Antichrist is going to get, but he lives for a while. Yea, that's what the devil said in Genesis 3. Are mighty in power. That is the Antichrist. He's going to do signs and wonders. He's going to have an image come to life. And rat on people who don't have the, the name and the number of the beast. Their seed is established in their sight. Their family. Their children. With them and their offspring. Family. Before their eyes. Now in general... In general, outside the Antichrist, you look at a, a wicked person who's vile, and you look at the, at their families like you know, look how wonderful they're doing. Look how great they are. And you see this in the realm of politics. You know that, that, that person in politics he's so wicked and vile, and why is everything so right with them? And people attack that on Facebook, but if you read the book of Job, we're reading about it now. <coughs> Their houses are safe from fear. Okay, you know what Job's saying right now? So far, if I was wicked as you called me to be wicked, and anybody else is his friends, because they have claimed it to him, 
Why do I have the fear I have right now? Job's coming out saying, listen, I fear. Wicked men don't have fear. The Antichrist has no fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. Everything looks great. Everything looks wonderful in their life. If I'm wicked, then why is God chastising me and my family? They're bold. That's the first time that word shows up. Gendereth. That's another word that first shows up. Job just had his, had his livestock died or taken violently. Job is saying, hey, if I'm so wicked, why do I not have any more animals? And faileth not. And when we read the book of Revelation, when we read about the, the Babylon, we... And Babylon has got all these great merchandise, as you would see the great stores today. The well-populated stores, the well-doing, they've got everything you see, and he's got it all. The Antichrist is going to have livestock, he's going to have souls, he's going to have men, he's going to have silver, gold, iron, he's going to have it all. Because there's only one way to buy, is you take his mark or his image. And when you go into the tribulation period, the Antichrist is marking up and more and more and more. And the Jewish people are getting lesser and lesser and lesser and dying and suffering. The wicked will outdo, will be outstanding in the tribulation period. And those that are God's people and who want to help God's people, they're the lesson. They're cow, calveth, and Cast is not, that's the first time that shows up, not her cat. So in other words, the animals give birth to their animals in great numbers. They multiply. That was a blessing given to the Jewish people in the law if they were to obey God and they didn't obey God. The Antichrist is getting that. And all those that will follow the Antichrist and receive the mark during the tribulation period only. They send forth their little ones, their children, like a flock. And their children dance. And they take a trimble, a timbre and a harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. Who are the ones that go out and to bars and go out to concerts and go out to musical events and have great time? The wicked. They had the concerts. They got the great sing, <coughs> the great singers, and the, you know the great bands, and all. That's all the wicked world. Do you know the church is going into that today? You know who has the concerts today? Who goes? You know the churches. These mega churches have these great uh, uh, contemporary music concerts, and they got their rap contemporary music. They got their rock Christian music. They're just like the world. Well, why doesn't God, if it's wrong in the name of God, why doesn't God just send fire down and wipe all their drums and everything? Because Job said, why do they prosper? The long-suffering God is, he wants them to get right. And if God were to send fire down and destroy them, they would go to hell. They spread their they spend their days in wealth and a moment go down to the grave. Wealth is gone. And Job picked up on this in 1819. Listen, we're all gonna die and you can't take it with you. El uh, Zophar said that in chapter 20. And when Zophar said, you know, your wealth will be gone and you're gonna go in the grave and you're going to rot, you can't take it with you. Zophar is pointing at Job that, hey, Job, you ain't got nothing no more. Because you're wicked. Job is saying, hey, listen, the wicked still have their things. I don't. And they die one day and they don't get it. So far, you're right to a point, but you're not right with me. I lost it all. And when a wicked man has everything, and when he dies, he goes to the grave. Yeah, he can't take it with him. Now, therefore, they say unto God. Depart from us, 
for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Has Job ever said that? No, Job said, Lord, show me where I'm wrong. Show me where I've sinned. Lord, I confess my sin. Show me, God. Job has been completely opposite. So far, the wicked say, God, we don't want to know you. And that goes on 2019 when we preach the gospel, we hand out gospel. To, oh, we don't want to have anything to do with God. Uh, we want our own religion. We don't want the ways of God. And the Bible says that Jesus says, I am the way. And the wicked man doesn't want to know. The knowledge of the way, Jesus Christ. How do you know a wicked man? A man comes up to me and says, Oh, I, I, I'm a Baptist. Well, how can you tell me I'm not saved? Do you want to hear the gospel be preached? No, I want to play my music. I want to shut you up. Now, I have a right to the Bible to say you're wicked. And call the question what salvation you claim. Because you don't want to know God. And when you're dealing with somebody, oh, I don't want to know about that. Be quiet. Shut up. Go away from me. Keep it in church. That's a wicked man saying, I don't want to know the way of God. I've got my religion. That's a wicked man, according to the Bible. A Christian will say, yeah, tell me more. I want to know more. Even a backsliding Christian will have some kind of interest, and then he'll say, you know, well, it's the church I was in, they angered me, and I, I just got, I don't want to, but they would kind of listen. The wicked man said, I don't, no, no, shut up. What, now here's the wicked man too, verse 15, what is the Almighty? They don't know the Almighty. Well, I'm a Christian, I let my light shine. That's not what Jesus would do. You don't know the Almighty. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Go out and tell people about the kingdom. Tell people how to be saved. How to be with, right with God. You go to a Jehovah Witness. You don't know the Almighty. Jesus is not God. You don't know the Almighty. You're wicked. That we should serve him. You see what it says there for the wicked man? A wicked man does not know God and does not serve God. Religion will serve their church or their pastor or who's ever in charge, but they will not serve the Almighty. We're going to pray to Mary. We're not going to pray to Jesus. That's wicked. And Mary's not Almighty. That's the mark of a wicked person. And you'll meet them in public ministry. Now watch this, and what prophet? Notice the spelling, P-R-O-F-I-T. Not P-R-O-P-H-E-T. They got the wrong prophet. Now you find me a man who can preach the Bible and preach it correctly out of the King James Bible and, and believes that the church is going out before the tribulation period and rightly divide the word of God, I will listen to that prophet. But when, when I, and again, I'm, pre, I'm preaching about what I know. When I go and preach to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am a prophet. I am telling you what the Bible says, where you will go without Jesus Christ. You will go to hell. I don't want anything to do with that. You know what they'll say? You're going to ruin business. You're going to drive our customers away. And you ask my family, and they'll tell you that. Instead of hearing the profit of what's going to happen in my future, you're going to ruin our money, profit. That is a mark of a wicked person. According to Job himself is saying this. What profit should we have if we pray unto him? I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot to pray unto God. And I've seen time when we, where I have not prayed to God, it's come out for the worst. And I have seen when I've got people praying for it, it comes out for the best. And it's not always going to put money in your billfold, but man, it can put down, it can add to count your many blessings, name them one by one. Now, you may not be able to go and buy a brand new car with that, but man, you can glorify God. 
and you got the modern churches today and oh the easy believism oh the prosperity gospel it, it will you know give god ten thousand he'll give you ten thousand that's not the case i found right now being saved since 1987 i have found out right now that when i look at prior blessings that god has done in my life and to help me today with the problems I'm having, and possibly tomorrow the problems I'm having. The fact is that prayer has worked, and God is listening to my prayer. That's a lot better than having ten dollars. And I count prayer as a prophet, and so winning as a prophet, so winning. When I stand, and all Christians stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And if they have put their interest in God, it comes out to gold, silver, or precious stone. And with that, it will be trading for a crown and a millennial inheritance in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years. And then after that, I go to a city of Jerusalem with all the gems and all the gold and all the silver that man values and keeps in a locked place today. You know, God is so secure, he has a wall and, <coughs> and gates in Jerusalem. There's all kinds of gems. There's a gold street. Yeah, he keeps the doors wide open. You know that? Go to your local bank and see if they'll keep that vault wide open for you. And you got in, in, in the eternal life in, in New Jersey. Come on in. Doors never shut. In the book of Nehemiah, the, the, the city of Jerusalem was shut on the Sabbath. No one could come in. You can't bring your wares. You come back again, I'm going to pull your hair. I'm going, to, I'm going to beat you up. That's not with God. And when I read this stuff right now, and I'm involved in the ministry of the farmer's market, I see these people, oh, we're so godly and holy. You're going to drive our business away. You're wicked. That's why we keep coming back and preaching the same gospel. Now you want to grow, you're saved, you want to grow, I will meet with you another time and I will teach you Bible principles. But when I'm at the farmer's market, I'm going to preach the gospel, only the gospel, because many of you are lost and going to hell. If you weren't wicked, you weren't interested in your pocketbook, you would come, you would come to me and say, let's go learn more. You don't, you're wicked. Probably no salvation. I find a lot of prayer to God. Lo, their good is not in their hand. It's gone. I'm a good person. It's not in your hand, wicked. When the Bible says, there's none that doeth good, no, not one. Now, I'm a good person. You didn't hear me. It's not what you can do. It's what Jesus has done. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. Job says, I don't even listen to them. I am not going to ask their opinion. Don't call me wicked. You know what the counsel of the wicked of the, of the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to be? You know what their prophet is going to be? Receive my number and my name. And when you receive my name and number, you can get profits and you can go to the grocery store and you can get the, the health care. That's not going to do you no good because in the tribulation period, there's one point in time that you're going to want to die and you can't. Isn't God great? The Antichrist will give you profit if you believe in him. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? Death. How often do dead people die? They die. How often does a wicked man die? They die. And how often, I mean, how oft cometh their destruction upon them? Once they die, where do they go? They go to hell. That's destruction that never ends. You know, if a, if a wealthy, wicked man, let's say a tornado came and wiped out his mansion and his limousine and his Jaguar and destroyed his art collection and his indoor swimming pool with different temperatures and all that. Let's, let's say that was destroyed. He can march down to the insurance company and say, hey, here's my claim. And he can get it all back. And maybe invent some more. 
But when you off it into hell, you ain't getting nothing that you had on this earth back. You get your eyes, you get your tongue, you get your fingers, and you get torments. That's what you get in hell. And how oft cometh their destruction upon them, God distributeth, that's the only time that word shows up, sorrows in his anger. Heaven's a place where God's going to wipe away our tears. Hell is a place of sorrows without tears. You realize when we go into the final eternal life, both lost and saved, there are no more tears. To the joy of those in New Jerusalem, to the fret of those in hell, oh, I wish I could have a tear so I could dry my tongue, pull my tongue. <coughs> they, the wicked, are as stubble before the wind. Blow away. Bye-bye. Stubble for the Christian is lost. The world. So you take the stubble of the Christian, the judgment seat of Christ, and, and Job, long years and years and many years before that was written, the stubble of the wicked is worldliness. Of no value of a child of God. To God, it's burnt up and gone double as chaff that's the first time that word shows up that's the uselessness of wheat that's not the the, the kernel of wheat that's the the leaves the stalk and the kernel covering that the storm carrieth that's the first time that word shows up carrieth away what they would do is after they have beaten the the wheat they would take a pitchfork kind of thing, throw it up in the wind. And the wind would carry off the refuse. And the kernels would drop down to the threshing floor. God layeth, that's the first time that word shows up. And God layeth up his, not God's iniquity, the wicked man's iniquity for his children. And he rewarded him and he shall know it. When a man wakes up in hell, he knows about God. He knows. A man in hell is a Bible believer. You go to a graveyard. Everyone that's under the ground is a Bible believer, saved or lost. His eyes shall see his destruction. That man in hell, Jesus saw Lazarus, saw Abraham, saw his fingers, and saw torment. And he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty God. John said, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God upon him. The Antichrist is going to go to hell one day. Uh, the lake of fire. The devil will go into the lake of fire. They're both wicked. Job says, Yeah, okay. The wicked go to hell, but I'm not wicked, but they will go to hell. For what pleasure hath he in his house after him when the number of his month is cut off in the midst? What pleasure you have after you die? I mean, you get your house. I like the furniture. I like the, cur the color of the curtains. I like the, the wallpaper. I like this stuff over here, that big fancy desk. and Everything is just right. Well, what's that going to care when you die? Ain't gonna do you no good. You shall drink of the wrath of my what pleasure? Verse twenty two shall all right. Verse twenty two now changes. We're going off the wicked man for a moment. Shall any teach God knowledge? What are you going to teach God? Now doesn't that sound like a very silly silly question to ask? And yet, are there not men and women out there who have changed the word of God to tell God what they think? Have they not gone into pulpits or whatever their religion has? Have they not said what God never said to tell God what they think and believe is so? 
have not the Jehovah Witnesses taught God that, well, Jesus is not God, and there is no literal hell, God, you are wrong. And we are the Jewish people of the 144,000, though we got a billion. God, don't you see that we're the ones that are right? They're trying to teach God something. There are people today will try, hey, God, you don't know anything. There are people when you are in a public ministry and you are involved with the King James Bible, that's not what the Bible would say. And I turn around and tell them, you have not read and studied the Bible. And what they're telling me is they're telling God, because Jesus takes it personally, you don't know what you're talking about, God. You haven't looked at me. You know, God, you got to understand, Mary has more power than Jesus. They told that to Jeremiah about the Queen of Heaven. Seeing he judges those that are high. The powers that be. Romans 13, God will judge them and also lofty and prideful men. One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. That is, that's your natural death. Man, you got your health and you got things, things are well to do. And you see, I know one man who served the Lord, went home sat in his chair, closed his eyes, and opened up the eternity. I've heard of people, you know, they go lay down in bed, they close their eyes, they wake up eternity. People go into a hospital, they lay in that hospital bed, and just, when the nurses come in, they're gone. And most cases for this one right here, death by natural causes. Death happens. His breasts are full of milk. And his bones are moist, and that's the only word time that word shows up. With marrow, that's the first time that word shows up. Now, a male does not have milk in his bread, and what the, what the thing is, is nurturing. And with the word of God, does not the Bible say, we desire the sincere milk of the word? I've got milk in my bread, able to teach people the Bible. Now, I'm spiritually applying but what Job is saying, listen, this man is healthy. His bone marrow is healthy. A lot of your diseases come from bone marrow. When you got cancer, that's one of the tests they'll do is they'll, they'll want your bone marrow. See how your uh, white blood cells, I think it is, are doing. The guy is healthy. He's dead. The, the wicked man is evil and wicked, and he's dead. You know what Job's going to say? Death happens to everybody. You know why we're going back to death? Because Job started this whole conversation. Oh, I wish I was dead. Now watch this. And another dieth in the, in the bitterness of soul and never eateth with pleasure. Here's a guy who's angry his whole entire life. Uh, look at that guy over here. Look at look at this world leader over here. Look at this president. Look at this senator. Look at this person. Look at that person. Ah, and that church is just so bad. Oh, look at that neighbor. Look at I should have got the promotion. <laughs> and he died. The man that's healthy dies of natural causes. The man that's angry and bitter, he probably has some kind of disease and he died. Or he could die of natural causes too. You can be happy and go lucky and die. You can be angry and bitter and die. They shall lie down alike in the dust. They're going to be buried. And the worm shall cover them. Your body's going to decay. You're going to rot. Behold. I know your thoughts. Uh oh, he's back talking to his friends again. I know what you're thinking. And the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. You're wrong. What you guys are thinking about me, you're wrong. You imagine what they're you imagine the expressions on their face right now. For ye say, <laughs> oh, where is the house of the prince? Come on, Joe. Where is your royalty? Where is your high dignity? You're sitting a dusty. 
You, you got, you, you're destroyed with a disease. And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them at, have you not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their token? Don't you even know what a wicked man is? Job has, because Job has been and is a judge. He's dealt with wicked men. Who tried to swindle, deceive, and take advantage of other people. That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. Hell. You know what the destruction of the Antichrist is going to be? He's going to lose it all. Jesus Christ will come and destroy him and all his work. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Again, John said, he that has the son shall not see life, but the wrath. It's hell. The wrath of God is hell. The Bible doesn't speak about hell. Yes, it does. Change that word to Gehenna. Change that word to Hades. Wrath. And the modern Bibles, you will not be able to go to John 3.36 and run that cross-reference. They probably changed it. Who shall declare his way to his face? Who shall repay him that he has done? All right, far as the wicked man. What is the wicked man's defense? Well, let me ask you, Christian. When you appear before God one day, what is your defense? The blood of Jesus Christ. Our mediator, 2 Timothy. Our advocate. First John. And when we do sin, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we sin, we go up to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, your blood, your sacrifice, that's my only plea. The wicked man, I'll give money. I'll, I'll go to religion. They ain't going to do it. People are going to stand wealthy and poor at the great white throne judge. Jesus, didn't I do this? Jesus, didn't I do that? Jesus, I was good. Jesus, this, Jesus. I don't believe in you, Jesus. Oh, I had Allah. Oh, I had Mary. I had Indian cow. I, I didn't believe you at all. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. What, what is that man going to plead at that point? What is going to save him from the lake of fire? When Jesus, God Almighty, say, I never knew you. He has no defense. Yet shall he be brought to the grave. Death. Death is going to happen. And shall remain in the tomb. He ain't no resurrection. And the resurrection here, he's not come, He's not going to be a zombie. He's not coming home. Once you put him in that tomb, once you bury him in the ground, Uncle Harry's not coming home. I don't care if he believes in reincarnation. That, that, matter of fact, put that right next to that verse right there. That is against reincarnation. Because Job says he stays in the ground by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, October 31st coming up, they're not going to come out of the graves and have dinner. Job says when they go in the grave, death, they're not coming out. You say, what about Lazarus? He died again. But he did not go back home to Mary and Martha afterwards. The clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him. Dirt. Dirt. And every man shall draw after him. As there are innumerable. That's the, only, that's the first time that word shows up before him. There have been people before him. There will be people during him. And there will be people after him are going to die. And why is dirt sweet to him? Because the body doesn't suffer no more. Alright. You've got a horrible disease in your flesh. You die. You won't feel that in the grave. You will need no medication when you're in the grave. Now notice Job didn't say anything about the afterlife and the soul. Because if Job were to say the afterlife or the soul... After he's died, he's in torment, Jesus told us. So when we die, the spirit goes back to God. 
Our body goes to the grave and doesn't feel nothing, the, the body. Our soul, will, if it goes to hell by rejection of Jesus Christ and God, it goes to a place of torment. If we're saved, we're absent from the body that's in the grave and present with the Lord and we're peace and joy. So when a Christian dies, and there's that body. It ain't there. It ain't there. But that body that had physical ailment has that no ailment no more. But a soul that goes to hell, that's a different story. How then comfort ye, ye, the three men, how ye comfort me in vain? Oh, he threw it again. Seeing in your answers what you've been talking about, watch this, there remaineth falsehood. You know what he just said? Everything you answer to me, you're liars. Woo! Job has broke out of his comfort zone to give them the truth. People today, they want to stay in their little comfort zone. They don't want to offend anybody. Job offended rightfully. And God is able to get these men right later on when we come to the close of Job. You know, the worst thing you can do is stay in your comfort zone and don't ever be offended. And God will never and cannot and would not ever use you, saved or lost. You got to break out of that bubble. 